In this lesson, we're going to go over the basics of functions. We're specifically going to speak about relations and functions and how to differentiate them and function notation. So what we're working towards is a standard for mathematics where we're eventually going to build the functions that model the relationships that we're going to be studying about. So first we're going to go ahead and make sure we understand what's a relation and when is a relation a function. So a set of ordered pairs is one way to look at a set of relations, but they also could be seen as a table, a mapping, a graph, or an equation. So just because we see sets of ordered pairs doesn't necessarily mean it's a function, but those are different ways that we can look at them. So when we're talking about inputs and outputs, a set of x values is called the domain, so there are inputs, and the outputs, or the y values, they are a range. When we're looking at a relation with distinct points, in other words, they're not all connected, it's called discrete, but if it has connected lines or curves, it's called continuous. Okay, so down here, that yellow and blue ovals, that's one way we can show a mapping. So for example, if I have something that's a, like, people and height. Let's say I have a person like named Joe, one named Chen, one named Bob, and one is 6 feet 3 inches, one is 5 feet 10 inches, and one is uh, 5 feet three inches. A mapping just kind of goes like this. And it just tells you how one corresponds to the other. And of course you know what a graph looks like. A graph. And when we're talking about the inputs and the outputs, in a mapping, this over here would be our inputs. And this would be our output. When we're looking at a graph, a graph the x values, so in this case because it goes all the way to the left, that's the arrow, and all the way to the right, and not skipping anything, the inputs would be all real numbers, and the output also would be all real numbers because it's going to continue to go down and continue to go up. What makes that relation a function? So if you look over here, it says a relation. So for example, if we were looking at a set of ordered pairs, would this set of ordered pairs be a function? Well, I have the inputs are 0, 3, and 5, and each one has exactly one corresponding output. The inputs are distinct, and whatever their output is can be whatever we want. But as long as each input is distinct from the other, that's usually an indication that it's a function. So what about this function? Well, I have 0 as an input gives me a 1, 3 as an input gives me a 0, so it's still a function, but then I see 0 as an input again, but this time it gave me a 5. So it's like using a recipe for brownies, expecting it to be brownies on the first time. The second time you did the same recipe, gave you cookies, not a function, because that same output gave me two different inputs, which means we really need to put it in the not a function column. When we're looking at a mapping and we're trying to see is this a function or not a function, well, it depends on the outputs and inputs. Okay, so each of my inputs, zero, has one output, one has one output, and two has one output, so it's a function. But if two maps to both three and four, then this would not be a function because 2 has two different outputs. And when we're looking at a graph, one of the things we want to look at is something called a vertical line test. So that is definitely going to be a function. Okay, the vertical line test is a way that kind of helps us understand if we have more than one output for each input. So let's go back and look at 
the graph of a parabola. Okay, so if you recall the vertical line test, the work say you go from left to right. And as you go ahead and move across with a vertical line from left to right, if you have more than one part of the graph intersecting that vertical line, then it's not a function. If only one point is on both the graph and the vertical line at the same point time, it is a function. So this is a function. Later on in the year, we're going to learn perhaps about a different type of parabola. That's a conic section, and conic sections don't have to be functions. And so we see, as we go ahead and we run our vertical line test, once we get to about right here, this is failing the vertical line test because my vertical line is touching the graph up here at this point and this point simultaneously, which makes it not a function. So things that are going to be curvy, like circles, ellipses, sometimes are not going to be functions. This would never be a function. But some polynomials are usually going to be functions. They'll pass the vertical line test. But if it loops itself over at all, not a function. Okay, so we're going to do a few practice problems to make sure we understand. Okay, so in this directions it says to find the domain and range of each relation and then determine if the relation is a function. So when you're looking at a set of ordered pairs, X's are always going to be the domain, so we would go ahead and use brackets to show it's a set. Then list negative 1, 0, 4, and 6. The Y's are always going to be your range, so again we use brackets and then we list our Y's. Okay, is it a function? Well, so to tell if it's a function, we look and see if there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between our domain and our range. And so for each number in our domain, each one only maps to one number, negative 1 to 9, 0 to negative 3, negative 5, 4 to 3, 6 to negative 2, so yes, it's a function. Okay, on number 2, I think hopefully you understand how to list the domain and the range, but let's look at it as if it's a function. So I see 5 and a 5. The first time the 5 gives us a 2, but the second time it gives us a negative 6, so this one will be... No. On a table of values, this is already a list of our domain. And this is already a list of our range. So let's just look at are these functions. So I don't see any repeats in my x's, which means even if all the y's were exactly the same, it has to be a function. But over here, 10, 15, 18, 24, still no repeats in my domain. So yes, it's a function. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of these now. So on number five, is this mapping a function or not? Well, I see that at the five, it's mapping to two different outputs. So this would be a no. And on number six, I see that each input has exactly one output. So yes, it's a function. Okay, now, number seven and number eight, we're going to go over both domain and range because it's not as easy to see what they are. So I see on number seven that it has four points. Two, three, four. And so in order to figure out what the domain is, I would have to go ahead and I would see what the ordered pairs are. So this one here is negative three, one. This one here is negative three, negative two. This one here is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And this one here is 2, negative 1. So my domain would be negative 3. I only list it once even though it shows twice. 0 and 2. And my range would be 1, negative 2, 4, and negative 1. So is it a function? Well, what happened is, remember, that vertical line test fails right there because those two points are lined up vertically. So this would definitely be a no. Okay.
Okay, on number eight, this whole entire line definitely is going to pass the vertical line test. So it's definitely a yes. But what about the domain and the range? Well, it's continuous. And so if we're looking at whatever x values, is there any x value that we would never be able to get? Because it's going to go on that way and that way, we would say it's all real numbers. The other way you could write it would be an interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. The range is going to go from as low as we can go on the left and as high as we can go on the right without skipping any numbers, negative infinity to positive.